Hello students. Welcome back. We are going to start with just a very quick revision on what we had last week. We ended our unit, Unit 5, which was uh, the title, Do You Really Need It? We had something concerning a project. Now, in this project mainly, we were asked to work in pairs or groups to think about the advertisements that you see, watch, or hear every day. They can be billboards, advertisements in magazines or newspapers, TV commercials, radio advertisements, leaflets, stickers, and so on. Now, we are asked to turn one of these advertisements and think about another way to advertise the same product. Now, this is what we have in our project. We can also use this kind of chart just to compare between the old advertisement and the new advertisement. And I remind you that it is about the same project. So generally, we had Unit 5, which was you really need it, about advertisements. And as we know that these advertisements, they can be aimed to any type of person or uh, the different people that we have in the society. They can be uh, for older people, they can be for young people or children, they can be for mothers, they can be for family, they can be for teenagers or younger people. So we have here, there are different types of advertisements and of course they can be for different genders. Now, we are going to move on and we are going to see our new unit, which is going to be the last unit, inshallah, that we have here. And we can see that we have here these uh, different genders. Now you can see that there are different ways to just introduce the gender here or the type. And we are familiar with the different icons that we have here. We have unit six, which is the title, the gender divide. And in this gender, which is going to be the last gender in the unit, we have related between the types of advertisements and what can be related to the people in the society. Specifically, we are going to talk about the topic of genders. So moving on, we are going to start with the first lesson, which is listen and discuss. Now we do have these two symbols. We know that one is used for female and the other symbol is used for male. We have our question. In what ways do you think men and women behave differently? And we do have another question here. In what ways do you think their behavior is similar? So you can see that we have here once the verb, which is behave. And then another time we have the noun, which is behavior. Now we are talking about the similarities and the differences in behavior between male and female. So what do you think about it? We have our question here. Do you think there are more similarities or differences? So when you think about how each gender behaves, and once you have thought about the male behavior and the female behavior, what do you think? Do they have more similarities or do you think that they have more differences? So this is a question just to put in mind. We have our objectives for the day. We're going to start with number one, differentiate between genders. Number two, to give personal thoughts about each gender based on character. Number three, to infer the meaning of new vocabulary through context. And number four, to answer questions. So we are going to start our lesson with a very short conversation here. Now you can see that we have these two females. Now we have here Sandy and Amel. I want you to listen to the short conversation that we have between them. So let's start. I think women talk much more than men. That's just a stereotype. Though I do think women talk more than men about certain things. Like what? Women like to talk about their feelings, but men usually don't. Men rather talk about sports or cars. Typical. Now here, Amal, she sees that it is very typical that men like to talk about sports or cars. Here, this short conversation shows that there is a difference between the two types. Now we are going to go more and Throughout the unit, we are going to think about the differences. Now, do you think you know a lot about men and women? 
So if you still don't have the complete idea, we are going to pass by true or false statements. Just put in mind that you are going to read these statements and put in mind the answer that you have, your personal thought. And after we finish our lesson, we're going to see if these statements are still the same that you have in mind. Now starting, we have the first statement here. Women talk more than men. Do you think it's true or false? The second one, women tend to worry more than men. Men are more truthful than women. So do you think that women lie more than men? Men are more easy, easily bored than women. Women have a greater tolerance for pain. Women live longer than men. So here, this is the same chart or the same table that we do have in our book. You can just, with a pencil, check which one do you think is true or false. And as we said, we're going to go back and revise our answers at the end. So moving on with our lesson we have here, we're going to check afterwards. Now, first, before we start with the discussion that we have in the book, we are going to pass by the words that we have here. And actually, I'm going to just show you the exercise that we have in the book. We have the exercise page number 83. So you can see that we have the words anxiety, gender, repetitive, stereotype, temperament, capacity, intensity, restless, and tedious. Now here, we pass by the words, and just to give you a hint, now we do have these pictures. You can see that there are different pictures that we are going to go pass by also in the lesson. So just to have a very quick look at the pictures here and have an idea about them, we can see that there is a person. This person is once, he looks sleepy. The other time he looks a little bit worried, and we can see that he is bored in the third picture. We can see that we have this kind of symbol we have these bottles or liquids in the bottles. We do have different moods here, you can see. We have something which is very clear, the symbols for each gender. We have a child eating fruit and vegetables. And we do have the fist here or the hand which shows some kind of power. Now, moving on with our lesson, we are going to just go by, by these questions, which are the comprehension question that we have here also in the book. Now, we do have these questions, page number 83. We are going to answer these questions while we are passing by the discussion. So moving on, we are going to start on page number 82 and 83 in your book. So let's start. Now we have two questions here. We have the first one. How much gender difference is there in speaking? We have the second question. What is the average of words men and men, women and men can speak a day? So passing by here, we can see that we have here the common stereotype that women talk more than men is wrong. Now put in mind the statements that we have in the true or false. So here basically we can say that how much, very little difference between them. And moving on, we can also highlight another point here, which is some research suggests that men tend to speak more than women in formal settings and that women speak more in informal situations. So we can see that it is not true that women speak more, but they may speak more informally. So to going back to our answer here, we can read the rest and see that the average words for each man and woman who speak every day, the average is going to be 16,000 words. Now we do have two words from the words that we mentioned in the vocabulary part. We have the first word, which is stereotype. Now relating to the picture here that we have here, there's an idea that children, basically, they do not like to eat vegetables or fruit. Now this is just a stereotyped idea that we have here. Now we can say that stereotype is a widely held but fixed and oversimplified image or idea of a particular type of person or thing. So it's just an idea that people put in mind about a person or a thing. Also, we do have another word here. We have the 
word gender that we have already discussed. Now we can say basically that it can be referred the word gender to either one of the two, male and female, especially when considered with reference to social and cultural differences rather than biological ones. Moving on, we have here the second part, why do women worry more than men? We can say that studies show that women worry more frequently than men. So how is that? We can say that we have here, women's brains produce less of a brain chemical called COMT, which controls anxiety. We do have one of our words, which is the word anxiety that we just mentioned. And you can see from this young man here that he for sure has an anxiety, which means here basically a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. After that, we have the question, why are women more likely to lie? And why do men lie more often? So what do you think about the statement that we said, who lies more? We can see basically that women lie frequently and men do too. So here we can see that it is an equal answer, but women try to not hurt a person's feelings and to avoid a conflict. That's the reason why they lie. On the other hand, we do have something about men more often lie in order to make themselves seem more impressive. Now moving on, we do have do men like to do tasks. So we have discussed about speaking in general. We discussed the topic about lying. We mentioned it. And also we have here about doing tasks in general. So we can say that do men like to do tasks? We have here studies show that men have more restless temperaments than women. Now we do have the word restless here. We can see that this young man, he is restless, meaning that we have here unable to rest or relax. Also, we have the other word, which is temperaments. Now here, when we said that there are different moods, actually, these are different temperaments. Now, these different temperaments means that we have different types of nature, a person's or an animal's nature, especially as it permanently affects their behavior. So each person has a nature, a special nature, which affects his or her uh, way of behavior in general. And we can say also that this word can be used with animals. Now, moving on. Do men like to do tasks? So we have the answer, no, they don't. Then we have another point here. It is speculated that women do better in these situations because they have a greater ability to keep their thoughts and imagination active. So this is the reason why we have here, women are better in doing tasks. We have the word capacity mentioned also in our vocabulary part. So we have here capacity, as we can see in these bottles, the maximum amount that something can contain. And actually, even people, each person, they do have different capacities to handle pressure, to handle uh, heavy types of uh, tasks that we can uh, have or we are supposed to do. So we have here the word capacity can be used also with people, as we mentioned. Also, another word mentioned here is the word repetitive. Now we can say that something is going on and on. It is repeated. So we have here containing or characterized by repetition. The last word that we have here, which is from the vocabulary part, we have the word tedious. Now when we see this young man here, we can see that he is basically bored. So we have the word tedious here is too long, slow, or it can be dull. Now moving on. Why do women have lower tolerance for pain? So some people, they feel that women have the greater ability to tolerate with pain. Now, actually, here we can see that, however, the research seems to indicate that due to their body chemistry, women actually have lower tolerance for pain. So we can say that this is due to their body chemistry. Moving on, we have our word, which is the word intensity. Now intensity here, we have the hand. And I mentioned before, what does this 
picture symbolized. We can say that it can show strength or power. So we have your intensity. It actually shows power or strength. Now we have in our last part here, what is the average life expectancy in the US? We can see from the highlighted part that it is about 79 for women in general and only 72 for men. Now we have finished our part here. Just to check our answers, we can see that the first statement, what did you think? So did you answer, is it true or false? So from the discussion that we have in the book, we can see that the statement is actually false. However, the second one, women tend to worry more than men, we can see that this is true. Men are more truthful than women. This is false. So we said that they are together the same, equally. Men are more easily bored than women. This is true. Women have a greater tolerance for pain, so we discovered that this is false. And the last part, women live longer than men. We mentioned the life expectancy, which means that this one is true. So we have the true or false statements ready. Now you do have your assignment, your task, which is homework. We have the words that we mentioned on page number 83. You are going to fill the words and you are going to just answer. I'm going to check our answers in the next lesson, inshallah. Now we do have our comprehension questions on page number 83. So just to revise the answers that we did mention throughout the discussion, we have the first one. In what types of settings do women tend to speak more? We can see that women tend to speak more in informal settings, as we mentioned. What causes women to worry more than men? We can see that we have here women's brains produce less of a chemical that controls anxiety than men's brains do. We also mentioned the third answer here, which is question number three. What things do women tend to lie about and what things do men tend to lie about? So we have women tend to lie to avoid hurting another's feelings. Men tend to lie to make themselves look more impressive. What might explain women's ability to deal with repetitive tasks better than men? We have our answer that we did mention. It is possible that women are better at keeping their thoughts and imaginations active. Our last question here we have, which gender has the longer life expectancy, expect, expectancy? Give an example. We can say, for example, women have a longer life expectancy than men. In the US, the life expectancy for women is 79 and for men, it is 72. So we have revised. We know the most important parts that we have in our lesson, the listen and discuss lesson, and what is it focused on. Now moving on, we're going to observe our sentences again. We have the same answers and actually have answers and questions from what we mentioned. Here, I want you to observe something. You can see that we have here, women tend to speak. What causes women to worry? Women tend to lie. What might explain women's ability to deal with? Now, if you can see that we have here in all the four examples, there is one word that is repeated. You can see that we have here the word to. So here we are going to see the structure that we have here. And basically here we have another example from the passage. We have here having less of this chemical can make it harder for a person to stop worrying. Now I can give you two examples here. I can say stop worrying. And I can say at the same time, stop to worry. Here, using to in the sentence, it gives you a very different meaning. So one time we can see the verb worry is used with an ing. And the second time there is no ing, but we do have to. So this is going to be the second part in our lesson today. We are going to focus on the infinitive and also on the gerund that we have here. Now this part is going to be our grammar lesson for the day. We are going to pass by the grammar lesson as well as the listen and discuss that we have. We are going to see our objectives. 
So number one, to deduct the grammar rules from sentences. Number two, to differentiate between infinitive and gerunds. Number three, to apply the correct grammar form with the verbs forget, stop, regret, try, and remember. In sentences, depending on meaning, we have number four to use the passive form of the structures, and we have number five to use auxiliary verbs to shorten sentences. Now you can see that we have a lot to do, but actually it is all together, it is combined. So we are going to start first by just differentiating. We have the verb, it can be either a gerund, as we mentioned. Now we do know that the gerund here, as we had the example, stop worrying, is the ing form of a verb that functions the same as a noun. So when I have the ing sometimes with the verb, it turns totally from the form of a verb to the, a noun. So it looks like a verb, but actually it is a noun. We have here an example, running is fun. Now you can see that we have here running as an example. Running here is a noun, although it looks like a verb. So in this sentence, running is the gerund. It acts just like a noun. So it is not a verb, it acts like a noun. This is why we call it a gerund. On the other hand, we have the infinitive. Now you can see that the infinitive, on the other hand, is a verb form, but doesn't act as a verb. It acts as a noun, an adjective, or an adverb. To see that we have an example here, I love to swim. These two words act together as a noun, adjective or an adverb. So love is going to be the verb, but I do have to swim as the noun, the adjective or the adverb. So basically it depends on the sentence. Now we have the two types, which are the gerund and the infinitive. We are going to see the different meanings that each one implies. If the verb functions as a verb, what is the verb in the sentence? Where is the verb? So we are going to see five verbs. We have remember, forget, try, regret, and stop. Now put in mind that we are going to focus on these five verbs that we have here. These five verbs, they do have a direct relation with either a gerund or an infinitive. So we have here our idea. Now they come before the gerund or the infinitive and note that we said before. Now for example, let's just see the difference in meaning. He remembers to send his grandparents a gift on special holidays. You can see that we have a remembers to send. So we have the infinitive here with the verb remembers. Now this means that he remembers to do a task. He doesn't forget. On the other hand, we have here he remembers sending gifts last night. You can see that we have remember with sending, which is the gerund here. And here it means to remember have done something in the past. So you can see that there is a task that I want to do and the other sentence or with the gerund, it's something that I remember doing. Note that we have your remember, it can be used in the present past, the present simple or the continuous, it depends on the sentence. So we have remember. Here he sometimes forgets to take his vitamins. So I'm using this time the verb forget with the infinitive. Now we have this old man here, not remember to do a task, he forgot to do it. Here in the other example we have here, he sometimes forgets taking his vitamins. Now we have here the verb forget with the gerund and here we can see that not remember having done something in the past. So in the first one we know for sure that he had forgotten to take the vitamins. But in the second example, we can see that he forgets taking. He doesn't remember, did he or did he not take the vitamins? Moving on to the third verb that we have, we have the verb stop. Now we'll stop with the infinitive. We have here an example. 
He stopped to watch the sunset. You can see that this time we use the past. So which means that we have here this young man here to stop doing something in order to do something else. So let's just say that he was just walking and then he stopped walking or going his way to just watch the sunset. The other example, he stopped watching the sunset. We have here stopped with the gerund watching. We can see here that he stopped the action of watching and he completed another action. So you can see that there is a very clear difference in meaning. We have the same verb stop, but with the infinitive or the gerund, the meaning is different. Moving on, we have here the verb regret. I regret to tell you that I have a secret. Now you can see that we have here the word regret, which means that I have a feeling of being sorry. Or sometimes I just have to feel that I am, I don't want to do something or actually it has been done and I feel sorry for doing it. So in the first one, using with the infinitive, I regret to tell you that I have a secret. So here you have the meaning that I wish it wasn't necessary. I am going to tell you my secret, but I don't feel it is, or I wish that it isn't necessary. Here, this exam the second example we have here, I regret telling you my secret. We use regret with the gerund, and from the meaning, I wish it were possible to undo something. So it has been done, and I regret doing it. So you see the first example, I regret to tell you, I am going to tell you, although I don't want to. On the other hand, we have the second example, I have done my action and I regret it. So we have, this is the verb regret, we have the last verb, which is try. Now using try with the infinitive, I tried in the past to reach them, but I couldn't. Here, you can see that there is an attempt to do something. So I want to contact someone. I tried to reach them, but I couldn't. I tried several ways to contact them. When I use the other example, I tried reaching them by email. Here, using try with the gerund, try a specific method to reach a goal. So I have tried the first time to try different ways. But when I use the gerund here, I am making it specific. So I tried reaching them by email. Now you can see that we have used the five examples here or the five verbs with both the infinitive and the gerund in different examples. You do have your exercise, which is on page number 84. Page number 84, we have circled the correct form in each sentence. So I'm going to just do three sentences with you to just understand the exercise here. Did you remember to shut or shutting the window before it started raining? So we're talking about something that happened in the past. Did you remember to shut the window? Did you do the task? He stopped to play playing football after he hurt his knee. So we have something that is, is continuous here. So it's not just one action that I'm going to do and then I'm going to complete or stop doing. It is something for a long period. So here we have here, he stopped playing football. Number three, if you haven't been able to get an answer from the boss on the phone, maybe you should try to send or sending him an email. So like the example that we just explained, you are doing something in specific here, which means that we have here sending. Now we do have some other things to observe. We're going to observe more. Now we did mention that we have here the gerund and the infinitive. We mentioned the basic part, which is using them with five different verbs. Now we are going to observe here these sentences. We have here, you are more likely to be told a lie by a man for a different reason. We have another example. They dislike being asked to do such th uh, tasks. So you can see that we have here B in both examples. One time, it is like the infinitive. We have here to be told. 
And the other, mind, uh, the other example we have here, B is like the gerund. There is an ing being asked. Now, when you see these two examples, do you know who is actually the subject or who did these things? You are more likely to be told, do you know who told you the lie? No. And in the second example, they dislike being asked to do such tasks. Do you know who is doing the asking here or who asks? No. So we do know that we are going to use the infinitive and the gerund, but this time we are going to use it with the passive because we do not actually know who is doing the verb. So moving on, we have here passive forms of infinitives and gerund. The passive form of an infinitive is to use to because we are dealing with the infinitive, but specifically with the verb be and the past participle. For example, we have here, everybody wants to be respected by somebody. We have here, wants to be respected. In the other example, we have here, the passive form of a gerund is being plus the past participle. So we are dealing with the verb as a gerund. That's why we have here, be with an ing. And then there is the past participle. So we have here, being asked to settle an argument. Now the passive form, as we did mention, you can see that we have the object mentioned at the beginning. We have here to be, past the past participle for the infinitive. We have being, ing, there is no to of course because there is a gerund with also the past participle and the rest of the sentence. To add something, since we are talking about verb to be here, we do have a relationship here between the verb which is the helping verb in the sentence and also the main verb in the sentence. Now, when I say that there is a helping verb in the sentence, what do I mean? Basically, we have here helping verbs. They are auxiliary verbs. So that's why when we have here verb to be, we know that actually verb to be is related to is, are, and am. And you can see that there are different auxiliary verbs here that are treated and they can be used in this sentence as a helping verb. They can be main verbs as well, but basically you know that they have a very important role as an auxiliary or helping verb. Now, what do we have here about these auxiliary verbs? We have using these auxiliary verbs after but, or, and here in sentences. So we're going to see some examples. Now, when an addition is made to a statement about or with but and or and, often the main verb is not repeated, so I can use them in the sentence to stop repetition. Instead, it is replaced with an auxiliary verb. So we have here, for example, but we can say, my sister isn't good at remembering special occasions, but my mother is. You can see that we have used the auxiliary verb or the helping verb is after but. John doesn't get frustrated easily, but Sam does. Also, we have here does is in the sentence. We can do the same thing with and. We can use the auxiliary verb after and. So we have here, he enjoys outdoor activities and his son does. So you can see that we have here and the subject and the auxiliary verb with two. And if it is a negative sentence we have here, we don't like going for walks in this heat, and he doesn't either. We have here either in the sentence because we are dealing with a negative. Now you do have some exercises on page number 85. We also have other examples that we can see on page number 85, which are dealing with open answers here. Now our outline of the day is, First of all, we discussed gender differences. We understood context through words and defined vocabulary. We also checked answers and answered other questions. In the other part of our lesson, which is the grammar, we have the discussion about infinitives and gerunds. We turned these infinitives and gerunds into passive forms, and we also used auxiliary verbs in the sentence. So this is our, or actually these are two lessons that we have here today. We have discussed the part, which is the listen and discuss, and also we have studied the grammar structures that we have 
and the second part. So just look at the exercises that we have in the book. We will complete, inshallah, in our le next lesson, so be ready.